Uh, and uh, Matt from Denton is calling us. He's our first out of town caller today, I think, and he's probably going to ask us some good questions. So, hi, thanks for waiting. Matt, are you on? Yeah, I'm on. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. All right. Um, what I wanted to, um, I'm actually like working on a YouTube video on this, mm -hmm. um, is, all right, you know how people are starting to embrace evolution? And, you know, there's actually like courses, Christian courses that people take that kind of merge uh, the Bible mm -hmm. and evolution together. Mm -hmm. But um, this always, like, begs the question of um, when did our souls begin? You know, like, was it like Australopithecine, Homo habilis, Homo erectus? Mm -hmm. um, and they're all just kind of stumped on it, what I've been noticing. Yeah, uh, they, they, none, of them, none of them have really addressed that question in their curriculum, is what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm not surprised, you know, that when you, when you are trying to defend, uh, you know, the idea of something that, A, first hasn't been proven to exist in the first place, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to determine, well, when we first got it. Uh, so, I mean, it's well, just as, you know, you might as well say, you know, well, when did, when did human beings develop the ability to teleport? Well, well I mean, without any evidence that we can, is there's really no point in, in talking about the origins of that. And, yeah. and you know, um, what's interesting is that they, they also haven't addressed the issue of, when do our individual souls, you know, assuming we have them, um, when do we get those? Okay, um, yeah. because, you know, does it happen at conception? Does it happen when there's eight cells? Does it happen <laughs> when the cells are differentiated? Yeah. Uh, maybe it happens at implantation. Um, yeah, I mean, when does this what, divine soul upload occur? I mean, do you have yeah, to get what, you know, certain... What happens if there's twins? Do they start off with one soul and then they each get half a soul? Or... Do they, yeah. Does somebody take the original soul and somebody else, you know, yeah. the other twin gets another one? You know, how does this happen? Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of questions that, that theists have to answer. And, and it's not even just, you know, you don't even have to go back into evolutionary time to, mm -hmm. to come up with lots of problems with this concept of people getting souls. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a tricky one. And, and, it comes up, and it comes up with the, uh, you, you can sort of get into the interesting idea of, well, what about, say, you know, pirating souls? I always thought this would be an interesting idea for a story. Yeah. You know, you have this. You know, you have this theistic universe. You know, a god is creating his people, and then, you know, babies are being born and gestated. And at a certain point, at a certain point, a soul is introduced into the baby, and now you have a being, right? But uh, you know, what if there were some sort of demonic force out there, you know, battling against this god and stealing the souls as they are sort of in transit and essentially pirating them and, and, Actually, and corrupting them, and then yeah. then installing them into the fetus as uh, you know, co sort of corrupted people. See, I, there mean, was, I think there's a story there. And, and, uh, well, actually, yeah. I don't know if you ever watched the, the show Babylon 5. No, did they do that plot? Yeah, they had one where had, it was like, this... pirated soul pirating? Well, it wasn't that. It was this uh, soul hunter, I think, or something. This guy huh. that would, um, at the moment of death, he would be there and he would capture someone's soul as it was leaving their body and it would trap it. Okay, yeah. yeah. And so he had all these this bag of, like, bag of, <laughs> of souls. <laughs> and he, yeah. Okay. But that's, that's and, sort of like getting them after they're dead. Yeah. I like the idea of sort of like corrupting them in the womb from yeah. the outset. So, um, you know, maybe that's how the, you know, the Antichrist 666 will be born. Oh, there you like go. That. He'll have the, yeah, so, a Yeah, there's soul. all kinds of, uh, you know, interesting little problems. The theater. And you know who hates the theistic evolutionists? Uh, the, the, the traditional creationists, the intelligent design crowd. Oh, yeah. Um, all the way, you know, all the, everyone who just, uh, you know, uh, any, any of the groups of creationism. They don't mm -hmm. agree with one another, right? You have the young earth creationists, you have the old earth creationists, you have the intelligent design bunch who says, oh, we're not creationists, we don't talk about God. Uh, yeah. But you know, they are, they're all different, they all have their own little idea about how creationism works, but they're all united on one thing, they cannot stand the theistic evolutionists because mm -hmm. they're not true Christians, right? Yes. And so, uh, so they don't like guys like Kenneth Miller and Francisco Alea and some of the other, you know, believers who also, you know, understand proper science when it comes to evolution. So it's a funny one. But, yeah, I still think that with, uh, you know, theistic evolution, you do run into that, you know, little problem of, well, at what point does God do his tinkering? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you understand how evolution works, I mean, is, is it all just God creates everything and then just kind of leaves it alone to do its own deal? And, and then, so what sort of scientific evidence can you provide for that? So I still think they have a lot of a problem. They're halfway there. Yeah. And when I, when I saw Kenneth Miller speak, um, I believe it was last fall, it was recently, at UT, I was sort of like, man, you're so close, just, yeah. you know, you're yeah, so just, like this close, I mean, just, yeah. you know. But he has his reasons for, you know, hanging on to his Catholic beliefs, and, and that's fine, but, you know, as long as he is clear on good science, that's, that's fine with yeah. us. So, anything else, Matt? What else? Um, well, I actually had, um, I, well, I'm a member of, I go to UNT, I'm a junior, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a member of the Free Thought, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, we actually had Lori Lintman and um, okay. last Tuesday. You know who that is? Yeah, the the uh, the um, the lobbying group that she does, the Godless, yeah. Godless Americans PAC. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And how was how was that? Oh, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, she's a real cool girl. Um, she, uh, you know, how she's been on like Colbert Report, uh, yeah. Riley mm-hmm. Factor. She actually had played those videos mm-hmm. and. Um, told us that um, Colbert's actually a really good actor as soon as, like, the camera's off. You know, he goes to being a normal person. Right. <laughs> Although, yeah, uh, Kenneth yeah. Miller showed us the clip when he was on Colbert, too. And uh, that was really, he said that's the one, you know, he's gotten more respect from his students from that clip than he has. Anything, he's, anything yeah. else he's done in 30 years of teaching at Brown, you know, he's gotten, he's, <laughs> the students love him for that more than anything. So, yeah, I saw Lord, Lord Littman Brown spoke to, uh, two years ago at uh, the Amazing Meeting, which is uh, the James Randi Educational Foundation convention that happens annually in Vegas. And she was pretty interesting. She yeah, saw some of her, and, uh, and apparently she's come and spoken to, with the ACA Lecture Series <laughs> as well. And I, I missed that weekend, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, I, I, since you are in the Dallas area, I was going to mention that I do believe uh, that, uh, that um, Barbara Forrest is speaking in your neck of the woods very soon here, coming up, I believe, sometime this month. Hmm. I think you can go on the Texas Freedom Network website, tfn.org, and get information about that. She is absolutely worth seeing um, because she will talk about her battles in the front lines dealing with creationists and ID, especially her uh, involvement in the Dover trial. Um, And it was her visit to Austin uh, a year ago that uh, caused uh, the firing of Chris Comer, from the State Board of Education. Uh, Chris Comer sent out, all she did was forward an email from, uh, um, I believe it was either CFI or Texas Freedom Network, just saying, hey, this, this person's coming to town to speak on this subject. That's all she did. She forwarded this email. Right. It's and the creationists who run the XBOE, <coughs> SBOE, um, I think, it, I think she, was it State Board of Education or was it some other? Um, was, it, was that the, was that? Yeah, Texas, Texas Education, Education Agency. Agency. I'm sorry, Texas correction, yeah. TEA. That's the group that she belonged to, Texas Education mm-hmm. Agency. Well, they sacked her for that. And uh, she, she has since filed suit, and it's, it's uh, been a really nasty thing. But, you know, it was so funny when the, the, you know, the ID group put out this expelled documentary. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they tried to give their examples of all of the right. ID supporters who they say were booted out of their jobs for supporting ID, when in fact, when you know the, 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 their actual situations, that wasn't really what happened. Right. But here on the pro-science side, we do in fact have the example of Chris Comer, who was forced out of her job based upon her support for proper evolution, mm-hmm. you know, viewpoints. And, um, and now, as I understand, uh, there's, there's like this big swift voting campaign against her because this... Uh, oh, you knew that was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And so the- if you go to techscience.org and tfn.org, you can find all kind of information about that. But I just wanted to bring that up. Since you're in Denton, uh, try to find out info about that and go see her if you can because she's worth it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right, Matt, thanks very much. All right, y'all have a good one. Yeah, you take care. Okay.